I would like to bring to order the, the meeting of December 11th, Green Bay Sexual Offenders Residency Board. Um, do we need to go through roll call? You can document. Okay. <coughs> All right. Then uh, let's look at uh, approval of um, last month's uh, agenda. Um, approval of minutes, excuse me. Um, actually, approval of the agenda, I apologize. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda for the December 11th meeting? I'll make that motion. Second. to approve the minutes uh, from our November 13th meeting. So move. I'll second. Uh, could I get someone else to second? Oh, okay. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Okay, our first uh, appeal uh, is uh, Mr. Donald Sh uh, Schenke. All right, Mr. Schenke, uh, we're going to hear your, hear your appeal today to move to 2235 Imperial Lane, apartment number four, is that correct? Yes. All right. Uh, as we go through your particular uh, appeal, just please uh, keep in mind that uh, we'd just like you to, if uh, you talk about the, the offense, you keep it to uh, non descriptive just refer to the victims, uh, not by name or by personal name. Uh, and then also, if we want to talk about any treatment programs, you have the right to do that either in public or private session. Which would you prefer? Public is fine. Okay. All right, looks uh, like uh, your offense was distribution of child pornography, is that correct? Yes. Um, tell me uh, what happened, how long you were doing it, and how you were caught. Um, I was caught by the Canadians, uh, Toronto Police Department, I believe. Uh, they referred it to the uh, FBI in Milwaukee, who then investigated it further. Uh, a couple of incidents in um, late 2009, I think, and then again in May of 2010, and then my house was... Um, they served the search warrant on my house in August of 2011 and then removed the computers. Um, I've been using a program called Data Tribe uh, to download mostly um, pictures from the internet and from other people and some trading and that because I left my folders open, that falls under the federal definition of distribution. Even though I wasn't running a website, I wasn't actively, I guess what most people would call distribution, but it was, I mean, from that standpoint, I let it open so people could pull things from my computer. So you were, you were viewing this for approximately two years? Yes. Okay, how did you start watching this? Um, I just was looking at other adult pornography and uh, came up and then got into it more and kind of got caught up in it. Okay. Uh, in terms of his conviction, is that solved? Uh, do you have any information on it? It sounds very uh, close to the criminal complaint. Okay. Okay, great. <coughs> um, so does uh, anybody else have any more questions for him on the, on the particular offense? The reason you were leaving the folders open was for other people on the website to look at it? Um, I'm not understanding it, that term. It's it, um, to remember, um, I'm trying to think of what was the big um, music file sharing program. 
um, from Napster. Napster. It's a similar program to Napster in that um, you could do a search by certain keywords and it would look across the internet and find those um, particular types of pictures. And then um, it would download them from multiple computers and kind of recombine them onto your computer. So you left yours open so that other people could download them as well. So it's kind of a, it was a file sharing program. And so, so you would download in from other people's files as well. Yes. Okay. okay, and when were you released? I was um, technically released on uh, the second from the BOP. I was in halfway house up till the second. Um, I'm still in the halfway house waiting on the opinion of this board and I was released from the actual Milan uh, May 22nd and went to the residential reentry center that day. Okay, um, so I guess the question is it says um, you haven't had any sexual offender treatment so mm -hmm. far. Not yet because until I was under the probation department they couldn't refer me out for treatment. Even at the federal level during your eight years of incarceration? Um, on advice from my lawyer, um, he had said not to participate because of the way the federal system works. Anything I said could potentially be used to bring additional charges. Are you active then? So his, his recommendation was not to do anything. I did other types of treatment. I did um, rational thinking class and um, some anger management uh, type things, but I don't have proof of that because it's in a box in storage. So I didn't include that on the list of things. I did do a, a transition program uh, through the halfway house. Okay. That included you know, anger management and some other transitional things, but not that yet. Are you currently employed, sir? I am. Where are you employed? I'm at Alorica. Where? Alorica for another few months, another month or so. What is that? Um, it's an inbound call center downtown. Okay. What do you mean by you're, all, you're there for another month or so? They just notified us on Monday that they're closing. Okay. So we're all being laid off. Okay. Are right, there any other questions for him? Are you going to be on um, any kind of electronic monitoring? Not at GPS? this time. How often do you meet with your probation agent? <clears throat> um, I will be meeting with her at, um, my understanding is at least monthly. Um, I'm not sure. We haven't set up that schedule yet. She was going to be meeting me here tonight. I don't know if she's come in late or not. I don't see her. But she, I know she was coming from another meeting, so she was planning on being here right about four. But apparently, I didn't realize I was going to end up being first. <laughs> okay. I have a, a actually a question for Commander Abel. Does yes. this? Uh, the gentleman's explanation about why he wouldn't take treatment in federal prison was ring true? I'd have to look into that. Um, I wouldn't. There's additional crimes that are uncovered. Is is certainly possible. Okay. But it would. I mean, what, if he's in the care of a psychologist, isn't, isn't that covered by confidentiality or not? Doctor-patient confidentiality. In the BOP, you actually sign a piece of paper that says you waive all confidentiality. And they are guards first and psychologists second. They will tell you that. Okay. And it's also my understanding that um, if somebody would reveal something during counseling that is a crime against a child, that that can be brought forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> all right. All right, any other questions? Um, are you originally from this area? Yes. I was uh, born in Superior, but my um, birth parents lived here, so I've been here since I was three months old. Okay. Uh, the only time I left was when I went to college in Oshkosh for a few years. Okay. All right, is there anybody here in, uh, that wants to speak for him, support or, or against? I know his agent was going to try to be here, but I guess she's not. Mm -hmm. Sir, did you, did you uh, come on up, sir?
Have a seat. I need your name and address for the record. Name is Rob. Roy D. Ryder, address 1079. Lane, Oneida. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, I'm a Circles of Support volunteer, and he's been attending regularly every week. You know, he's there all the time. Participates, he shares. You know, I see him as he's working to change, change himself. How long has he been a part of your Circles of Change? Circles of Support, how long? Three months. Oh, I'd say at least that, yes, yes. Ever since I started accepting federal. Yeah, we, we didn't, we only could take state before. He's a, I think they're, we got two federal, federal guys at one time. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Not really, no, I mean, I, he, he shows up. He's positive, he shares, he contributes, and that's just what I know. Okay. So, okay. Right, thank you. Yeah. Sir, before I ask for motions or anything you'd like to say as to, you know, why we should approve your your application. Um, I have long time ties to the community. I've got lots of friends here. My family is in the area. They're not all in Green Bay, but they're in the area. Um, and so I would like to be able to to be able to put down mm. roots by actually having a place that's my own. Um, and so I hope that uh, you'll support my application today. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion? Excuse me. Can I speak for Mr. Shinky? Uh, who are you, ma'am? Um, I'm one of the case managers. Oh, sure. Come on up. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. You just came in. Sorry, my heart's like beating fast. I don't know. Can you just have your uh, name and address again, please? Um, or work I'm address? I'm and I work at 2670 University <laughs> Avenue. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. What was your name? Nicole Machapato. Could you spell that last name? M A T C H O P A T O W. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, um, like I said, I'm one of the case managers that have been working with Dot, and he has been compliant with all of our house <coughs> rules and procedures. Um, at this time, we have no concerns with Dot as he's complying. Is there a reason why he wouldn't be on um, after he left, why his supervision he doesn't have, he's not going to have an ankle bracelet or anything like that? Do you know of? Well, I can't speak to that. Okay. Um, I guess that's something that Ms. The Don and his agent would know. Okay. Okay. Well, and so he's been with you guys ever since he was released, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. And then technically he is no longer a BOP inmate. Um, he is now a U.S. probation person, so Don's still kind of residing with us until he gains housing. Okay. All right. Any other questions for her? All right. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a question for you, sir. Uh, one of your conditions released does address uh, assessment and treatment, but you say you're not in, in any program at this point. I haven't been referred yet, but um, my understanding from talking to my probation officer that that will be coming here in the next month. It's just because until the second when I was officially released from the BOP, she wasn't able to do the referral yet because it's two separate programs, jurisdiction kind of things. Okay. Okay. Does anybody uh, want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to prove <coughs> Mr. Shunke to 2235 Imperial Lane number four, address specific. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, sir, you've uh, been denied to move to 2235 Imperial Lane number four. Um, doesn't mean you cannot reapply in the future. Um, you know, I can tell you I voted uh, no, and the reason is, is is that you haven't had any uh, sexual offender treatment program yet. Um, 
So that's the reason why I, I voted no. I mean, anybody else could, could tell you if they so choose to. Um, but again, at this particular point, you are not approved to, to live at that location. Okay. All right. Um, is it, I, I've watched some of the videos. Is it possible to do a conditional for three months or six months until that happens? Um, if someone wanted to bring it up, they could have brought it up in, in, uh, in the, um, you know, in the motion, and they did not. So we okay. voted on the motion the way it stands. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next person is appeal of Andrew D. Cross. All right, Mr. Cross, uh, we're here to hear your appeal to move to 837 13th Avenue. Is that correct? Correct. And you're currently living there? I am. Okay, you know you're in violation of the ordinance by living there prior to coming here. I was aware. Sorry. You were aware? I was made aware, yeah. Okay. How long have you been living there? A couple of months. All right. Since you were released? No. Okay. All right. Were uh, you living there before the crime? I was. Okay, who are you living with? My friend Perry. Okay. Does Perry own that property? He does. All right. Okay. Um, so again, as we go over your particular case, uh, we just ask that you refer to the person as the victim, not by a personal name or a surname or anything like that. And if we want to talk about any sexual offender treatment, we can do that either in public or private <laughs> session. Which would you prefer? Public is fine. Okay. So tell us about uh, the child enticement charge that you were convicted of and, and what occurred and, and how it happened. So I was on some dating apps on my phone, and one of the girls I met on there was underage, and I just ignored it and continued to talk to them. And then when I went to meet them, I was arrested. Okay, so you thought the victim was 14 years old, correct? Correct. And how old were you at the time? 31, I believe. Okay. So you, you knew what you were doing was illegal, right? I did. Okay. Why'd you do it? I was just lonely and depressed. How many of the other girls on the site were over age? All of them, as far as I'm aware. <coughs> so in terms of the charges, does that sound correct, officer? Yes. All right. So, um, that's, so this would be the point in terms of treatment if you haven't had any, correct? Correct. Okay, are you enrolled in anything or anything that you're looking to enroll in? Not currently. My appeal hasn't made me aware of any. Okay. So are you currently employed? I am. Where are you employed? With Grand Central Station. Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions for him in regards to the, the charge or his treatment programs? You were, um, he says you were in, in jail in Winnebago County? I was. For six months, was it? I was. And you went right from there back to the same address? Or was there any no, address in between? There was. I was at some temporary places and I stayed with my sisters for a while. All right. So uh, how long have you been at this current address then? Two or three months. Okay. And your PO knew about that, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, why should we let you live here? What do you mean? Why should, why should we allow you as a child sexual offender to live in the city of Green Bay at this particular location? Give us a reason why. It's the only place I know. It's where I grew up. It's where I've always lived. It's where all my family is. I, just, I don't know anything else. Is there a reason why you weren't living with your family? Uh, at the time, there wasn't a possibility. And there's still no possibility now? My sister passed away. Okay. All right. 
Any other questions? <clears throat> so your agent accepted you as a transfer back into Brown County without any approval of housing? Yes. <clears throat> and, um, go ahead. And, no. so, and the agent hasn't said you need any sex offender treatment or anything? No. Who's your agent? Tara Fierig is my current agent, but I was with Brittany Marquardt. Who are you with right now? Tara Fierig, I think it's pronounced. Okay. Is anybody here to speak either for or against this person? Okay. Uh, there is no one. Does anybody want <coughs> to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, to deny Mr. Cross at the specific 837 13th Avenue. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, let's, anybody have a discussion or do you want everybody ready to vote? Okay, let's vote. So this is a motion to deny. A yes vote is to deny. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so you've been denied to live at 837 13th Avenue. <coughs> In addition to that, I'm going to have an officer sent out there to make sure that you're not living there. Uh, if you are, not only will you be fined, your friend will be fined as owning the property as well because he's in violation of the ordinance as well. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't come back at a future time uh, in terms of uh, your application. Um, I would get with your PO uh, as soon as possible talk about potential treatment programs that you could enter and that would make you a more viable candidate to live in the city of Green Bay. Okay. All right, thank you. So could we have an officer go out there and make sure that... Got it covered. All right, thank you. <laughs> Uh, next is uh, Mr. Joshua Westland. Westit? Westit? Did I pronounce that correctly? Westit. Westit? Okay. All right, Mr. Westit, uh, we're going to hear to go over your, your case. Uh, looks like you want to move to 570. 615. Oh, so it's going to be 613 Hubbard Street? 615. Whatever the address on there. It's 613. 13, yeah. Hubbard Street, and you're currently living. At 702. Oh, playing court. Playing court in the pier? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and who are you going to be living with at 1613 Hubbard Street? Myself. Okay. All right. Uh, as we go over your particular case, again, just refer to the person or persons as the victim, not by a personal name, if you could. Yes, sir. And then second of all, um, if you do want to, <coughs> um, we want to go over your uh, treatment programs, your right to do it in public or private session, which would you prefer? I prefer private. Okay. All right, great. Um, so it looks like um, you have two different uh, convictions. Um, it's two, con one case, two convictions. One case, two convictions. Okay. There are two charges. Two charges. Okay. Tell us what happened. Um, when Go ahead. Sorry. When I was 17, I sexually assaulted a 14 and 15 year old male in a foster home in Denmark, and I reported it. You actually reported it? Yes, sir. Okay. So obviously you pleaded guilty to that? Yeah, uh, yeah no contest, but okay. yes, sir. And you served 13, no, four years? Yep. And I've had um, multiple um, probation holds. Or pro Revocations. Revocations. Forgive me, I'm so nervous right now. Oh, no problem. No problem. What were the revocations for? Um, multiple reasons. Um, viewing adult pornography, um, drinking, having sexual contact without agent approval, um, being a violent, have an anger, I used to have an anger problem. I received anger management counseling for that. Um, I exposed myself to a neighbor. So, after you were originally released, how many times, so you, have you served about 13 years in total then? Yes, sir. Okay. And when's the last time you were released? I was released most currently uh, January of this year. Okay. January 8th, I believe. 
And you've had no other violations since then? I have had two PO holds within the last month. One was for viewing adult pornography, which I served four days for. And then uh, the second one just happened last week. I was in jail for having contact, with the incident contact, not reporting. Consumed the contact with a minor? Yes. Okay. Did you know that minor? Yes, I did. Um, may I explain myself? Absolutely. Um, what happened is I was at the mic. Hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Don't take your time. I was at the Micah Center and for a birthday gal, their five year birthday gal, and a foster or people that I used to know through a former foster family were there with their child. And I struck up a conversation. I found out she was still a senior in high school, so I quit talking to her. And I failed to report that. And then um, they came out in a lie detector test last week. And so I was in jail for two days. OK. All right. Are you currently on an um, uh, ankle bracelet? Yes, sir. OK. Are you? Um, I'm, I'm a lifetime GPS. You are a lifetime GPS. OK. Uh, so tell us about, actually, uh, is there any more questions relating to his crime? <coughs> okay. Um, let's get to this point here. Okay, I need a motion to move into private session to talk about his treatment programs. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Is there a second? A second. If there's anybody here that's family, you are allowed to stay. <coughs> I'm going to go shut the door and notify um, Amy that her client has done. Okay. No, no, no. This is part of the process. I'm sorry. Did you want that ladder? I'm a I'm not biological family, but uh, one of the former foster parents. Absolutely, you can stay, sir. And stay at my house right now, so okay. part-time, I should say, yes. And that's my wife. Okay. I'm about to start a job through Advocates for Healthy Transitional Living. It's going to be a part-time custodial. Okay. Do you know what particular building you're going to be working at? Or, um, <coughs> or anything like that? Um, I don't recall, but I do have the representative here from Advocates if you'd like to speak to him. Okay. <clears throat> um, so a question that runs across my mind here is you're going to be living by yourself, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So who's going to who's going to help monitor that you know you're taking your medication and um, and that you're you're sticking on that right path, not getting in front of a computer, and 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 um, and keeping yourself clean during this process. I have multiple people for support. I have, I have advocates, um, Dan Holstead and Nick, who is here. I have my foster parents, which Bill and Nancy, and then I have Transitions to Success, which um, is a. Uh, like a <coughs> program for people, a youth aged out of foster care, which I was just recently accepted. And then um, I'll be responsible for myself. I've, I've been um, medication compliant on my own. So is the, is the court, does the court mandate that you take that medication? Or no, not? sir, I am not court order. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, does anybody have any more direct questions for him? <coughs> right, does anybody want to speak on his behalf or against him? Sir, why don't you start? You just have, come on up and sure. just have your name and address again. <coughs> yes, sir. <coughs> My name is Bill, Bill Mathias at 702 Oak Plain Court uh, in Depeer. Okay, go ahead, sir. The, um, the two incidences that just recently happened, um, just wanted to read iterate some of the details that he left out. So the one where he was viewing adult pornography on a 
tablet, I believe it was, occurred at cell phone, occurred at the bus station. Um, and within 24 hours, he reported that to me. So, like the next day, he reported what he had done, um, and then he reported it to his PO. That would not have happened, whatever it's worth, you know, four or five years ago um, when he was out. So I see, we see that as, as progress. Um, as bad as it was, we see that as progress. And he, he described pretty well the incident that happened at, at Micah, um, where it looks like a family came in, he struck up a conversation with them, he failed to report it to his PO. He came out in a recent lie detecting test. Um, it's my understanding from talking to the PO that those are the only two things that showed up in a lie detector test, which again, four or five years ago would not, not been the case. It would have been up to a lot more. So we think, my wife and I think, the medication has been very helpful. In addition to that, when he got out of prison this time, um, he, he just seemed different. Um, less, I don't know what the, what the right word is, but more agreeable, amenable, cooperative, to the point where we, um, when he's not staying in a motel, so he's on disability <coughs> right now, um, so he has disability money, he uses that money for motel when he's not there, then we opened up our doors um, for him to live with us. That would not have been the case four or five years ago. So we, so we saw that, that change as well. Um, he has the job that's in, in the works with advocates, as you noted, on transitions for success, um, aims to assist former foster um, youth <coughs> and adults up to age 35, um, which he is, he's, he's 35, so he's right on the cusp of that. I think the interesting thing about that is they as a program, this is a grant program, recognize that people that have been in foster care tend to grow up later, if you will, than people who haven't been, hence the 35, because that's not very unusual for a grant program that assists um, kids get on their feet, if you will, to go up to age 35. So I think maturity, the medication, his finances, from the beginning when he got out, he's been responsible with his finances. He had some back pay, for example, Social Security back pay. I suggested he put that away for first month's rent, security deposit, you know, despite being homeless, because he was homeless at that time. Um, <coughs> maybe at the TLP, I'm not sure. Um, but facing homelessness, because we had not approved him living with us at that time. Um, he agreed, and he agreed. So that started us thinking, hmm, something Something looks different this time around. Um, although I would concur, it's been many times around and around and around, and it's been frustrating for um, all of us who are trying to assist him to get on his, get on his feet and be a good citizen. So do you, are you concerned that about him living alone and the, and the fact that he's going he's gonna to have less structure in front of him? That has crossed our mind, and we've had that conversation, that um, he living alone raises certain risk, if you will. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think, though, with his, <coughs> you know, his work, with my, still, my involvement, I'm retired, so I'm, I'm available, I'm available often um, with him. And his PO is still on paper for, I think, about two Co years yet. A couple of years. Two years yet. Um, monitoring it, he's not allowed internet, he's not allowed a f cell phone, you know, some of those things have been put in place by his PO. But he's still getting on it. Yes, he did, phone. that's correct. He still got on it through somebody else's, through somebody else's phone. And he self-reported it in tears, I might add. I mean, he, which, I asked him about that, I said, well, why, I mean, he didn't have to tell anybody. I mean, there was no way, I don't think, other than the future lie detector test that he didn't know about, that he was going to be caught. Why did you tell me about it? Why'd you come in and tell me about it? And his response was, out of respect for you. That was different than what to happen four or five years ago. Um, so I, I am concerned, although I would add that two weeks a month, he's in a motel. Two weeks a month, he has nobody looking over his shoulder. Two weeks a month, um, you know, the motel has cable that has R-rated movies that he's prohibited from watching. So I, in some ways, yes, I'm concerned, but it's not too much different than half a month anyway. When he's wandering the streets, frankly, um, yeah, 
because he has nowhere to go or like he leaves our house in the morning he has his appointments down in the Green Bay area he stays down here all day long um, either at Micah, <coughs> the bus station, wandering, walking if he had a place to stay it just seems that that would be advantageous on balance to his mental health and living alone but yeah that, that's crossed our mind. Okay. Uh, any more questions for him? Why don't you allow him to stay with you full time? Yeah, I've asked myself that. Well, when he first got out back in January, you know, keep in mind, he lived with us when he was 17. He's 35 now. Right. So, this is a big time gap. And he's been going around there. I mean, I knew him, know him, but not really. So, when he first got out. Um, and so, I was pretty much convinced that living here is not an option. You know, I had, I had that conversation with him. In part because I want him to have that incentive to get his own place, you know. Um, in part because it's my wife and I, and we like our privacy. It's a relatively small house, open kind of concept, and so um, that was the it was the closed door. Saw some changes, saw some progress. Frankly, he lived on the streets for a couple of nights. You know, I'm I'm not accustomed to tough love. I mean, I am accustomed to tough love. Um, he lived on the streets a couple of nights. Um, and said, okay, you can sleep here, but you can't really like live here. You gotta get your own life. You gotta get back on your feet. You gotta get your own friends. You gotta get much of that. Although he does participate in family functions, in my family, you know, my family functions. So it's sort of that tension between, I say a little bit of a hug, a little bit of a kick to get going and, and become independent. He found this place. Um, the landlord is familiar with people who have committed sex offenses. He's got a number of people living there, or his other units, he told me. Um, I kind of see him as a grandfather type figure. The rent, something that he can afford, you just can't find that. We've been looking at the pier, we've been looking and looking and looking. And so he has kind of a unique opportunity, I think, to get some stability, some predictability, avoid the hotel, um, get some outside monitoring from those different support systems. It's probably the best opportunities had since, since you went in. I don't know if I answered your question. Mm -hmm. You did. Okay. Um, but then you sparked another question out yeah. of me. Um, so you said, if I remember, he was there until he was 18 and then... Mm -hmm. Then he moved out, right? Moved out mm -hmm. and then you really had no contact with him? No. Oh no, we had contact with him. He, when, he moved, when he moved out, um, he moved into, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but he moved into like a, a program that was designed to assist again um, former foster kids to get on their feet, and so he had that he had that structure. We had contact then, and then he went into. Oh, it was probably two years later. He went into prison when he was 19. So that's happened when he was 17. He went to prison when he was 19, and we've made time to contact the whole time. Okay, yeah, we visit him in prison. But <coughs> what I'm saying is, he never really, other than that year, lived with us and okay. afforded us a chance to get to know. All right. The reason why I ask that is because you kind of made a comment that, like, when he got out, you really didn't know him. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was oh, oh, wondering how much contact you've had yeah, with yeah, yeah, over thank the years. You. Thank you for your follow-up. We didn't know him like if he had lived with us. Okay. You know, or if I raised him. Mm -hmm. You know, basically he moved in when he was seventeen, he moved out when he was eighteen, he completed high school, no no problems, no hassles there. Um, something later when he was on his own, the charges were brought. It's been a merry go round more or less. As you can see, mm -hmm. you know, since. <coughs> okay. okay, thank you. Yep. All right, is there anybody else like to speak either for or against? Sir, so, come on up. Hi, my name is Nick Kaler, 2281 Oliver Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54303. Um, I'm the career service specialist at Advocates. So I met with Josh three times. Um, he's been uh, consistent with his desire to work um, pending approval. We're looking at five hours a week um, with supervision. Our, I have custodian. So he's been, he's been motivated. He's been um, clear about his past convictions, um, his most recent violation too. He told me unprompted what had happened. So I can tell you that, you know, Josh is one that self-reports just as, as Bill has, state, has stated. So I can just speak to, you know, <laughs> what I know him in three appointments, that he wants to move his life forward. As Bill stated, he also wants independence. Um, he w wants a chance. So. Um, so is there a reason why it's only five hours a week? Um, I, I've been on dis disability and I haven't worked in a, in a while, so I want to get myself used to that. 
Okay. So I think one of the big things and barriers, you know, and, and I've worked with community employment um, many years, is like testing out know, his work tolerance after, you know, not working for such a long period of time. And he's been open with, you know, his past and what he thinks in terms of environment, what a work experience would look like. He can certainly probably build to more hours or even like, you know, finding there's there's significant legal barriers obviously with his past is is just finding him the right environment at this point. So um, we're gonna be supportive. I'm going to have frequent check-ins with him. I've contacted his probation and parole agent with DOC to make sure that everything is co coordinated appropriately. Um, you know, Josh is cognizant and aware of, of rules, supervision. I'll have frequent check-ins with him to check on his job skills, life skills. Our custodian will always be with him as well as he, as he learns some new cleaning skills. Okay, so. all right, any other questions, Fran? All right, thank you. Yep. All right, does, does anybody have any more uh, questions or does anybody want to make a motion? You know, sir, I'll, I'll be kind of honest with you. I'm, I'm really kind of in the middle here um, as to what's your best um, way of looking forward as well as what's best for the, the city and its residents on this one. I. I I know, at least for, I, I'm not comfortable approving you to 1613 Hubbard Street, you know, a la carte right now. Which completely. Is, in other words, in other words, just hey, you're approved and you go on, and because I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sure where you're going to be and how you're going to react Kay. to it. So I'm just giving, just give me a chance to finish, then other people can can chime in. So <clears throat> I see that there's a benefit to you to have a place to live, um, a consistent place to live rather than being on the, on the street, uh, considering your, your um, uh, what you have to do for your medication <coughs> and, and your mental health, though, as well. So that's where I'm kind of sitting right now. May I? Well, is anybody else have anything to say? I, I agree with what you're saying, there, and I, I'm also looking at that particular dress being a block and a half away from Fort Howard Elementary School. and. It gives me a little bit of concern as well. Um, I'm gonna uh, along with the, the, the number of violations that you've talked about. Um, I go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I'm going to believe um, my PO is going to have um, restriction zones, safety zones on my GPS for all the parks, daycares, and schools throughout that area. Um, it's and uh, I have no intention to I have no reason I'm a grown man. I have no reason of being there. Um, I have no desire to go over there. Um, I understand, but I mean you, you step out the door you're probably less than a thousand feet away from the school just mm -hmm. just by virtue of being outside there. Do you have your own transportation or do you take the bus? I take the city bus, sir. That's an elementary school, right? Yeah. <coughs> Any other thoughts before anybody wants to make a motion? Can I propose? Go that? ahead. Um, I would, it, what about a temporary approval? Well, that's that's all up to the board oh. in terms of a particular motion oh, sorry. that somebody makes. Sorry. So um, it, that's exactly what I was thinking about uh, making a motion to approve uh, address specific. Uh, is it 613 Hubbard Street for uh, for one month? Uh, at which time come come again? Uh, see how you're doing, and you know whether or not there've been any other concerns. Uh, like to hear from your PO and uh, how things are going with with the things that you're working with. Okay, so do you want to make that motion? A lot of words there. I'm so, just you want, did, yeah, so how about you want to make a, a motion to approve him to 613 Hubbard Street, address specific for a term of 30 days till our next meeting, at which time he should prevent evidence as to um, uh, what his parole officer, what his status is? Yeah. So moved. <laughs> okay. Is there a second to that? I will second it. 
Okay, we have a motion address specific, 613 Hubbard Street, uh, for a period of 30 days. Which time we have to come back? Motion passes four to one. Okay, sir, you have been approved to move to 613 Harvard Street, address specific. You will have to appear uh, at our next meeting. Failure to appear will automatically void that and you'll be, you'll be asked to leave, okay? So the other thing you need to do is, is that I would have some sort of documentation from your parole officer written, okay? Or if they want to appear here, that's fine too. Um, as to, you know, what they've seen over the last 30 days. Um, in terms of your status and, and where you're sitting. Um, this, this is a big gift, in my yes, opinion, sir. for you. So make sure that you um, work hard and stay, stay clean and, and, and we'll continue to move forward. All right? Thank you, sir. That By the way, where would you want it mailed to? Um, to that location? The, the old plain court. Okay, plain court. Okay. That from the PO, do you want that a week prior to this meeting or the day of? <coughs> they can bring it the day of. That's fine. Uh, so <coughs> just to make sure we're clear, um, uh, you, you want us a letter from my PO, no other treatment letters or anything like that? Anything that you have that you're continuing to do from, like, for instance, your your one-on-one -on -one, uh, with your, um, uh, your other psychologist, a letter on stats would help to see how, okay. you're, how you're doing. Anything right. more that you can do to state your case and how you're improving with your treatment programs, your job, how your job's gone, would be very important for us to see if this is the right thing to continue or not. Yes, sir. All right? Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, next up is uh, Bruce for uh, Brigham. <coughs> right. For Hague. Come on up, Bruce. Hey, Bruce, we are here to uh, review from your last time here. Yes. Um, let me grab it here just to make sure. It's your aftercare program. Um, it should be report released in January, so that's what we're looking for to see what you got for us today. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Sure. Um, well, honestly, my court date okay. has been, I just found out, it has been pushed back to May 28. So I'm not sure how relevant this is, okay. this information. But um, here's the, um, what I got for my therapist. All right. So um, before we talk about this, are we okay staying in public session or would you like in a private session since this is related to your treatment program? Um, specifically... In, if it's public, that means the audience can stay or if it's yeah, private, then everybody has to leave. What was the topic? So if we want to talk about your treatment programs, you have the right to do it either in public or private session. So oh, okay. private means we have to clear the room yeah, and it's I, just us or okay. public is... Which would you prefer? It can be public. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, <coughs> so this is Kirkpatrick and Associates. It just says, upon his discharge, the agency will continue to provide sex services treatment to Mr. Hagen. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't really say how you're doing, um, which is one of the things that you know we wanted to kind of know, basically in regards to how you can have this back. Um, in regards to you know your after after care programs, um, so uh, you know we gave you ninety days. <coughs> Let me see who we're sitting here. No, uh, ninety days failed. It failed, and you wanted him to come back this month with right. a, a plan for his after care. Correct. So, mm -hmm. so the only plan right now is that you're going to continue with it. Now, is that something that you're going to have to pay for? Or is it part of you know how you're gonna be able to continue it after your release? Oh, on my SSI. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a. I might have to pay like maybe five dollars a session. Or I'm not exactly sure how it works, but 
Um, he said, can you, my therapist said that I can, like, I think use my benefits. There's a certain, I'm not exactly sure how that works. Okay. So right now, you're, you're not going to be released until May, correct? Yes. Okay. So basically during that time, you have, you have to continue your treatment program, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Is it once a, once a week, once a month, how often? Well, once a week. <coughs> <coughs> and when you say your court date has been pushed back, is that so you can get off of the conditional release? No. <coughs> it's been pushed back because Sheila feels there's a death in her family. Okay? So because of that, the court date would not be able to meet on December 16th. What is the court date for? Uh, for getting discharged. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and the only way for me to get discharged is for me to be doing good on supervised release. If the judge sees that I'm not doing good on supervised release and, you know, sees that I am a risk to the community, no discharge. Do you know, are, if you would be approved to move, are you able to move to this location or do you have to wait to move out of your current location until the judge approves that discharge? Well, um, I believe it varies. I've been told that as soon as the judge says discharge, I have 24 hours to leave supervised mm -hmm. release. But there have been other cases, or well one case in particular, where um, he has a month. Mm -hmm. So what I'm seeing is that it varies. So I guess another question would be, is so now that you're, you're, you're not going to be released in, until May, I mean, the odds of that location 1331 Division Street being available is probably not going to happen. I would say someone's going to rent that place out and not wait for you. 1331 Division Street? That's with his father. Oh, that's with his father. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. Okay. Yes. So I'm just going back here to where... <coughs> okay, that's right. I'm sorry. You're right. Um, okay. So at this particular point, you're still going to stay on New Franken Road in New Franken, right? Yes, until the judge. Um, Back in May. Yeah, until the judge determines that I am no longer a risk yep. to the community, okay. then he will give me discharge. Okay. So let's let's. Do you know when your court date is in May? Um. Uh, I thought he said May twenty eighth. No it's date. The it is the twenty eighth. May, May twenty. Okay, May twenty eighth. Okay. So, I, I guess. My thought process here is is that you come back for our May meeting, um, at which time, to be honest with you, I, I think we'd really like to see how you progressed in your program, not just the letter that you know you're going to continue with it um, no, after I you progressed. release. Yeah, right. yeah. So we need we want something more than say, hey, you would, you attended 22 sessions, you know, and you've been working. We want to know how you know how they feel in terms of your progress, that you, whether you're a risk or you're not a risk, something that they would give to the judge, basically, because the judge is going to look for that too, right, when they, yes. when they meet with you. So that's what we're looking for, is what, what are they going to submit to the court in your behalf to say whether you should be released or not be released from supervised supervision? Is that possible or not? Am I asking too much? Well, okay. I'm not sure if my therapist does this for anyone? I don't know. Well, w I, uh, I'm just saying you, you should ask. ask, ask. That, you, you have to say, hey, listen, what I would like is the information you're going to provide the court in regards to where my status is at the end of the May. I need this for the, my board to see if I can move to 1331 Division Street. I want to make sure I write down specifics so there's no problems. Okay. I guess my thought is <coughs> um, if the court date isn't until May 28th, I think. Personally, we should wait till the June hearing to make sure that he's actually discharged. Otherwise, he's still don't know if he is. Right. Mm -hmm. right. He could still be in the program. 
Well, the only, the only question is, is is that if if we wait till then, he, he has a chance to be on the street for 14 days, I guess. Because if they kick him out of there, right, you know, 24 hours. That was the only reason why I thought of May. I'm assuming that at that particular point, his therapist is going to be sending something to the court. Mm -hmm. You know, my, I mean, I'm okay to wait till June. I'm just saying that he's going to be, he has potential to be homeless for a couple of weeks. Does it, I mean, I'm. Yeah, I'm okay I mean, I guess I way. just think the state kind of gives them some opportunity. I mean, a couple okay. of days, I mean, all that'd be basically two weeks. I can't imagine they'd say, hey, you're out, unless they have somebody ready to. Do you, do you live alone? Or do you have a roommate? Yeah, I have a roommate, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so unless they had another offender waiting to get into that residence, I think that would be the only reason why I would have to leave. Okay. Okay, so why don't we make it our June meeting. Um, and so what we're looking for is the information that your therapist would give to the court on your condition. All right, um, so basically how I'm doing. Yep. Okay. And you would give to the court? Correct. <coughs> okay. All right. Thanks very much. I'm sorry. Can you I oh, speak of that? Sure. Uh, come on up, ma'am. He doesn't need to be emotioned. No, because he's still living in New Franklin, which is out of our area. Can you move? Okay. We still need to dispose of the vote. Okay. Well, the agenda item. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. So I have some more information to provide. So uh, regarding him being discharged in May, there is a chance that he could be discharged and they say you have to be out within 24 hours. That's becoming less common over time, but that has happened before. So it, it really depends on how the lawyers work with the judge that day. Um, sometimes they give a stay for seven days, sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's six months or more. Um, but there is a possibility that he could be discharged right then and there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, additionally, so the therapist, he wrote this letter because we thought that you just wanted information he'd be continuing treatment. Okay. Um, so that's why he phrased it like that. Sure. But I think he'd be more than happy to, to share what kind of progress Bruce has been making. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, he, so I know this therapist in particular doesn't always like writing those kinds of statements just because they can be misinterpreted so easily. Um, so I guess if you have any additional advice on what to look for, so I can pass that message on. Um, I think, I mean, what I'm looking for is, is, is that um, in his particular program is what's his risk level, high, low, medium, of reoffending, and and two is he learned his, his triggers in terms of prevention, you know, what, and then does he feel that uh, you know that uh, that the what he is going to say to the court in terms of discharge is accurate in terms of his risk to the community? So Bruce undergoes a yearly 980 evaluation that has that kind of information in it. Would okay. it be helpful if Bruce brought that with? Yeah. Okay. It's it's very thorough. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. That awesome. Um. Okay. Great. So how do we need to dispose of this since? Technically, we're not, should we just, uh, at this particular point, say a motion to bring him back in June? In other words, so make is, it, is, that, is that approval or is that denial? That's it's neither. Right. Well, I think well, technically we're denying him right now to move to this okay. address. Okay, yeah, I mean, he's been approved for a set time period, so if it's not a motion to approve, then that time period lapses and okay. he just comes back in May. Okay. All right, so let's make a motion to deny him to 818 Linden Drive, number six. Sorry, it's the Division Street. 1330 Division. Division. Or Division Street, I'm sorry, yes. So I was looking at the next one. Apologize. Is there a second? I'll second that. So yes vote is to deny. So then we'll, he'll be on the June agenda um, for this same location, um, and then he can provide the information where he's at. Motion to deny passes unanimously. Okay. Awesome. Thank you.
uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell Pennicut. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. Pritchett. <coughs> just go back here real quick. So you found a new location, correct? Correct. That paper, this was actually a little faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, right now, at 818 Linden, Linden Drive, or just Linden Street? Linden Drive. Linden Drive. Uh, Green Bay is where you want to be, correct? Correct, correct. correct. Okay. So, um, just some follow up uh, from a standpoint um, everything going good with your job? Yes, sir. Okay, no uh, interaction with any law enforcement? No, sir. Okay. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions about this particular location or questions specifically for him? We had uh, talked last month about you uh, getting into uh, Oh, this, this would be about treatment. So did you? Did we ask about? No. So again, if we want to talk about treatment programs, we need a public or private session. Private, please. Private. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I need a motion to move into private session. So mm -hmm. move. Second that. Monica, oh, we had, uh, I'm still waiting on the heads. Oh. There we go. Motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> My fingers are awfully rough. Okay. Um, <laughs> we just were in, in private session going over uh, Mr. Panicat's um, current treatment programs, which he informed us where he's uh, at at this particular moment. Um, in regards, we have a letter here from Linden Point uh, Apartment Homes um, regarding your. Um, uh, request to move to 18 or 81 8 Linden Drive. Um, they just reiterate the fact they, they express an objection to a possible approval for you um, under the city ordinance and they ask that you, they reject uh, you um, as part of that because they don't feel you're a good fit for that particular neighborhood. I believe that's the complex next door to where he's requesting to move. Yeah, that's across the street. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, so read in. Um, is there is there anybody else here that's either for or against him that would like to speak? Yeah, I mean, would you like to speak? You spoke last time. I remember. You need to speak again, or would you sure. like to? Sure. Come on up. Okay. Um, so your name and address again, please. Melody Horcher, twenty one oh seven Ontario Road. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I don't. I'm not understanding this. So it's a, it's a letter basically by the owners of uh, Linden Point Apartments, which is across the street from where he's living, and they're expressing concerns that they would not like him to to live at 8, 81 8 Linden Drive. So they don't feel it's a good fit, and under the ordinance, again under the ordinance, he wouldn't be able to live here. But again, he's here as as uh, coming to the board uh, for basically uh, an appeal to the ordinance. That's what he's here for. Oh, okay. They're so saying not to approve his appeal. That's what they're saying. Okay. Okay. That was my yeah. question because Mitchell's been doing great. Mm -hmm. He's been completing everything that he was asked last time, and um, I took him. I, like he said, I've been uh, 
his transportation. Um, when we went to the Brown County you know, uh, for his AODA assessment so that he could get his driver's license, one thing that she said to him that I know really helped both of us um, stay focused on the now. Don't worry about tomorrow. Stay focused on right now what you got to do. Stay busy. Stay focused on right now. And that's what he's been doing. He's been staying busy, working, and working third shift. And stuff. <coughs> Okay. I don't know what else I can say. I mean, here for support. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys have <coughs> oh, sure. Go right ahead. <coughs> Sorry. I don't have any more questions for him if, unless anybody else does. All right, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to uh, the 8.8 .8 Linden Drive location? I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Caponica to 8.18 Linden Drive, number 6, address specific. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Motion passes three to two. Okay, sir, you have been approved uh, to move to 818 Linden Drive, address specific. If you do move, you would have to come back in front of the board in terms of if you want to live someplace else within the city limits of Green Bay. Um, would you like it sent to that location or where would you like that notice sent? Uh, presently, uh, you can send it there. I'm going to look in as soon as Okay. <laughs> All right. I, w I just want to make uh, one comment here just for the record here. That um, I did vote no, uh, not that I wouldn't have approved un under another uh, set of circumstances, because I looked at last month, we had approved for 90 days at a particular address, and I should have jumped in a little bit quicker. I would have suggested we approve for 60 days just as a you know, follow-up, just kind of in, in line with what we had approved in the past, but <coughs> you know, so be it. So. Okay. Um, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Good job. Yeah. Next uh, appeal is Mr. Ab Snow. Do you have to come back in 60 days? No. That's good. Thank you all. Thank you, Dad. All right. Just a few moves if you need to do that rest of the week. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Merry Christmas and happy New Year. So last time you were here, uh, we denied you and we were looking to have um, some more, actually, yeah, we can say this in public uh, in terms of, because it's part of the record, um, in regards to additional treatment programs. Um, he said he could be in take within the next 90 days. He's encouraged to reapply once his assessment is completed and he's in treatment. So, so before we talk about um, the particular location again, you have the right to do it either in public or private session, which would you prefer? Private, please. Okay, I need a motion to move into private session. So I'll move. You have second a first and second. <laughs> Thank you. Jerry. I sent the board. Oh. Jerry, you can stay in here. Sorry. Yep, you can stay oh, in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep, you can stay in here. Yep, any family or friends <laughs> want to stay. So we have two of you. It's what she's on the side. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, all set. Okay, um, we had a chance to uh, talk to Mr. Snow in regards to his treatment programs um, and where he's currently at with documentation that he provided um, the board. Um, so does anybody have any more direct questions uh, for Mr. Snow, or does anybody like to make a motion? 
I have just a couple of questions. Uh, um, your your uh, sentence was for six months, and you've been in for. My one. sentence was for a year on one charge, six months on the other. Okay. They are. Um, con concurrent. Works, yeah. yeah, concurrent. <laughs> okay. So 18 months total. All consecutive. All consecutive. consecutive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're looking for approval for this address once you're released. When do you anticipate or when do you hope to be released? What I'm looking for in this um, <coughs> approval today is to be able to get out on house arrest, GPS, throughout Agamey County. Um, the only reason that I was denied was because of the, um, yeah, it was because of the treatment and the, via, um, the city violation. I was all approved to live um, at the residence until it came to my PO that my address was a violation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically what I'm asking approval for is to continue my um, sentence on GPS, which would be house arrest, GPS, and I'll do weekly check-ins with the Outagamie County Jail, and I will be on GPS supervision through those 18 months, and then I'll be on paper for another four years after that. Okay, does anybody um, want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Snow to 839 South Oneida Street, address specific. I second. passes unanimously. All right, Mr. Snow, you've been approved to move to 839 South Oneida Street. Would you like the letter sent there? Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Can I just have you sign that for you? Yeah. yeah. You guys have a Merry Christmas. You do. I'll take my pen back. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, I think I should withdraw at this point because I don't want to be in the middle of somebody's. Okay. Motion to let her leave. No. Someone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Don't make me document fake <laughs> motions. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. See you next month. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yep. Okay, uh, next up is uh, Mr. Joseph Kopke. Yes, Okay, sir. Um, how have you been doing over the last 90 days? I'm doing great. I've been still working for August Winters, working on the pyramid packaging expansion. Okay. Um, it's going great there. I'm a pipe layer by trade with the local 330 and uh, uh, no violations of any kind with the PO. Okay. Uh, the, re the residence is in the neighborhood I grew up in. It's actually just a few blocks away from my, uh, my house I used to, I grew up in, actually. Okay. And I have one of my chaperones that lives literally two blocks away on Juniper Street, 1906 Juniper. How's the, how's the community, how are you doing in the, within the community? Are you talking to your neighbors? Are you keeping it yourself? Um, What's your life like? Um, in the community, I'm actually, well, I talk to my neighbors because uh, well, uh, I actually have a detached, or not a detached garage, but I have to walk out of my building into the, into the garage. Okay. And their, their garage is attached. I, have, I, have a, I live on the corner a lot of Deborah and Abrams. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, like I said, the same community I grew up in. It's the Starlight community. Um, but it's, uh, uh, like I said, we're, I'm very friendly with neighbors. Uh, my landlord is actually a, a, 
the guy that used to come to my uh, parents' Halloween parties uh, when I was growing up. Okay. Okay. And in terms of your your social life, how are you? How are you doing in terms of just uh, whether it's friends or family? What's what's going on when you're not at work? Um, I bowl in I bowl in the league at Village Lanes. Okay. Um, I just bowled the 786 series uh, last Saturday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two, se 278, 264, wow. and 244. The 264 actually had the first nine strikes and I threw a split in the 10th frame. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, my buddy Adam, uh, uh, he's also, uh, he's got a property up in like the Middle Inland area. And so we go up there and ride four wheelers and firewood for, he's got a wood burning place, uh, stove or uh, fireplace okay. in his house. And I, I've known him since I've uh, been nine years old. I spent a lot of time with him. And like I said, my buddy Brandon, who lives two blocks away, uh, yeah, he's either coming over my house or I'm going over to his place. Okay. And um, my Aunt Bonnie, uh, which is in the back of the room, uh, she's always checking up on me. <laughs> she's, okay. uh, both my parents <coughs> are deceased. She's, she's pretty much uh, uh, my, my, uh, my mother figure. Okay. All right, does anybody have any more questions for him? Does <coughs> so anybody like to speak either for or against him before we ask for a motion? Um, oh, I don't need to, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> My name is Bonnie Van Vonder, and I'll spell it V A N V O N D E R E N. Go ahead. I live at 2374 Nicolan Circle, Green Bay. Uh, I've known Joe. I babysat him the first five years of his life, so I've known everything about him. He's doing very, very well. He's working 48 to 50 hours a week. Uh, he calls me once a day, whether he not wants to or not, and he tells me that he's doing fine. Mm. Uh, or he wants some food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, he came over for Thanksgiving, and we got done eating, and I said, okay, Joe, and he goes, I said, would you like anything to take home? He said, I happen to have some empty containers in the, in the, in the car. Family. <laughs> <laughs> so he left. So this way take her containers for leftovers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's how he's, but he's doing very well. We're real proud of him. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? <coughs> okay, no. does anybody want to make a motion in regards to his 1154 Adams Street? I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Trotsky, 1154 Adam Street. Abrams. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Street. Abrams Street. Address specific. Is there a second? I'll second. <coughs> Motion passes 4-0. Okay, sir, would you like that sent to that location? Yes, sir. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you. So you have an Aunt Rosemary? Yes, Rosemary yes. Ballone. I worked with her for a number of years. That was my sister. I thought so. Yeah, she, she was actually here at the last meeting. I missed that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> have a Merry Christmas. Yep. Joe, Merry Christmas. Joe. I used to be at those Halloween parties, too. Okay. <laughs> Were you really my sisters? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I worked. I worked with you. I don't think you're recognizing me. Not at the same place <laughs> as realtor. Yeah. Kathy D. Kramer. Oh. <laughs> we yeah. just got older. My, my sister had. A, yeah, never mind. Yeah. I was there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is Mr. Christopher Flory. Okay, uh, so what we're looking for here, Mr. Flory, is some documentation that we asked you to, to get to us. Um, let's get it here. Uh, letterhead from both your uh, PO and therapist addressing issues. Um, again, it, since we're talking about your treatment program, you can do this either in public or private session. We can do it in public, it's fine. Okay, great. So he has two pieces of information regarding uh, his therapist and from his PO, so we're just going to take an opportunity to, to read this information real quick. I apologize, my copy ran out of ink at all.
So how you been doing with your treatment? Good. It's actually been helping. Um, most of the lines of communication, like I have been, that was a big issue I've been with. Um, being able to express that, okay, I'm having a problem, I can talk to somebody. Usually I just bottle it up and can't control it. Um, so working with that actually has helped a lot. Um, and Susan and Brittany have been very helpful with that, also with my uh, <laughs> OCD issues. Okay. And uh, are you still currently employed yet? Uh, I actually started uh, the night of our last session. It was my first night of employment. Okay. So I was kind of rough being leaving here at 8 o'clock and having to work at 11. But you're now. still employed? Yes, still employed. I'm actually being offered promotion, so. Mm. Okay. Good. I mean, where, from where is it that you're working? I currently work with Staff Mart as a temp agency uh, attempt to hire through a two hour domain. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're better, right? Okay. And, and so when you're not working, what are you doing? Well, when I first get home, I sleep. <laughs> okay. Obviously. Um, otherwise, I'm always just around the house making home repairs and everything else. Because um, my wife and I had bought the house while I was incarcerated. Uh, and need a little TLC. So that's what I've been doing in my spare time. Um, if that doesn't happen, I've been hanging out with friends and stuff. So but mostly at the house. Um, socializing, playing uh, role playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons and such. Okay. Um, I will play on the Xbox, but not online. Okay. So. All right. Is there any more questions for him? All right. Does anybody want to speak for or against him? Mm -hmm. Ma'am? Name My and name address? Is Bonnie Flory, 1494 Morrow Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54302. Um, I'm Christopher's wife, and um, since he's been home, um, <laughs> and he started treatment, the communication between us has been a lot better before. If there was something bothering him, he would um, not talk about it. He would just, you know, um, basically look a little pissy and not, you know, discuss what was bothering him. But now, you know, we have that open line of communication. Um, he has also, in his spare time, um, especially with the weather changing, I have a seven year, seven, your 70 year old basically adopted grandmother we call her my grandma Lynn and he goes over there and he shovels the snow um, for her um, and he openly um, offered he wasn't prompted or anything he just you know called grandma Lynn to see if she needed help and in between the um, basically defrost when it got a little bit warmer he went over there and he was you know helping clean out her gutters trying to get um, ready for whatever snowfall might come before he wouldn't have done that he would have just you know kind of done his own thing but he's looking for ways to you know put himself out there so that he's interacting with people um, more and more which <coughs> impresses me because I we've been married nine years in this last September and nine years I never saw that okay so he you know having him home has you know, been a big benefit both financially because he's working. It you know it helps us be able to do the repairs, but you know I think emotionally for both of us. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Yep, thanks. All right, does anybody want to make a motion? <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Flory address specific 1494 Morrow Street. No second. passes for none. Okay, sir, you've been approved uh, to Morrow Street, address specific. If you do move, um, that's 1494, you would have to come in front of us again. You want it mailed to the Morrow Street address? Yes, please. All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys so much. You guys have a happy holidays. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, next is Mr. Bishop.
Okay. So, as I'm reading this, last time we saw you was in, or was May of 19. Yes. And 118 South Van Buren Street. Yeah. And you denied because you didn't provide any documentation for work and treatment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so now you want to move to 1857 Western Avenue. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask the same question we did last time. So do you have any documentation as it relates to, um, you know, specific treatment programs? I have my school and my work document that I don't have on me. Okay. Um, you should have brought in that. I'm trying to see if there's any, let me see if it's in the information you provided here. Is it in the packet? Hang on a second, let me just look. There was not, it's just yeah. the CCAP stuff. And okay. The All right. Okay. So, again, I think that, you know, what we're looking for is <coughs> last time you were here <coughs> we to move to a different address, we were, we were looking for that information that we had requested. Yes, sir. And, and so, you know, right now it looks like you, you know, you haven't brought it again. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Unless you can tell me what circumstances have changed. I mean, it's your open right. form. So go ahead if you want to say something. Well, right now, when I just got released in uh, October, I got out and I've been working for a month now. I'm in Brandon Road for school full time. I'm working two jobs, not just one. And what were you last in for? Forgery. Forgery. So is that between May and now? That you were in for forgery yes. when you were here in May. <coughs> yes, I had to turn myself in June 15 when I came and saw you guys in May. Okay. So where are you working? I work at Wyoming Foods and the parents that are doing janitorial the PPS. Um. Okay. So where are you living now? Right now I'm staying with my aunt. My mom moved right next door to my aunt in a duplex. It's the same landlord. So she got the left side of the duplex and my aunt got the right side of the duplex. So, you, so you're living within the city limits of Green Bay right now? Yes. At this western address? Yes. <coughs> I was staying with my mom at the 118 South Bed Baron, but she moved to the duplex that my auntie stays in. But she has houses, so I can't stay with my mom now. So I have to put my aunt address on it. So the 1857 is your aunt's yes. address? <coughs> okay. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, sir, I mean, I'm, I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm not tempted to vote for you to this location because I still don't have your, your treatment information, which was the reason why we denied you last time. So, I mean, we, we eventually gave you, you know, 60 days to do that when you're on the Van Buren Street, and then you failed the show uh, in May, and then obviously you were arrested or, or, or back in prison in June. So, I mean, uh, I don't know what the rest of the board feels at this particular time, but I mean, I think that's still uh, something that we, we need to see from you. So, uh, you know, am I missing something? Do you guys want to say anything different, or am I looking at this wrong? No, I, I see that too. So, I guess what I'd like you to do is, um, if you're willing to come back next month, <coughs> then come back next month with the documentation that we requested, which is basically your current pay stubs, but it tells us that you're still working, and then the documentation. I don't have any pay stubs, it's all a direct deposit on cars through QPS. Don't have okay, then we'll need some sort of letter that proves that you're working there from okay. your employer. Okay. Um, but then also then, again, we need, <laughs> we need that documentation as it relates to your um, your treatment program and, and what you did do, um, because that's what we were looking for last time. Okay. So. And I'm going to add also, um, because we've had a problem with the forgery of the landlord's signature, that we one time requested a certified letter from the landlord 
and you never did bring that in, but I'm going to request that for this time also. Well, what if I bring them in? Because my mom and my aunt is very close to the minimum. I can actually if, you, if you're bringing if in, comes, that's, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. Just ask for his ID. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that's Maybe him. Yeah. Yep. Picture ID. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can get your um, advice and deposit. <coughs> excuse me, advice and deposit from your employer. Do you have email? Yes. They can email that to you. Um, I, I understand most of the stuff is done electronically, uh, but even with that, usually they they do send you a, an advice and deposit deposit uh, notice in the mail. If they don't do that, minimally they should be sending it to you by email. So. You can bring that. I mean, if you don't have the checks and check stubs, that's fine because they just don't do that. But it does show <laughs> that uh, you had these uh, deposits made in your account. Yes. Okay. Um, so right now we're gonna we're gonna deny you for today because <coughs> of that information. But you're gonna have to, we'll put you on the agenda for next month. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm gonna deny um, 1857 Western Avenue. I second. So again, motion to deny, yes vote is to deny. Motion to deny passes unanimously. Okay, we'll see you next month. You guys have a great holiday. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Mr. Langman. since 2016. No, wait, what? You haven't been here since 2016? <clears throat> so you're looking to move to 115 Cherry Street, right? 1115 Cherry Street. 1113, yeah. Yeah. Apartment number 15? Yep. Okay. Um, all right, so tell us uh, how you've been doing. Really good. Really good? You're still employed? No, I'm on disability. You know. Disability? Okay. It's schizophrenia, depression, that uh, degenerative disc, herniated disc, herniated Okay. So what are you doing with your days then? Mm. Smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. Okay. <laughs> There's really not much to do. Well, then my, my family picks me up and I go and spend the weekend Thursday through Friday. Thursday through Sunday. And where is that located? Sometimes in Oka uh, Coleman. My grandma lives in Coleman and my mom lives in Flasky. Okay. So why are you looking to move to this particular location? Because right now I'm living at Diversions and it's now that I have steady income, uh, I have to move out on my own. Okay. So that means that's where D Dan's Avenue? Yeah. His diversions? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me just check something real quick. It, it really is more questions you're more looking to ask than what I'm looking for something. <laughs> okay. So you said you smoke cigarettes and drink coffee, but obviously you do more than that. I go to the store and all that. I got money and buy soda and stuff like that, coffee and I get all the cake blocks, this will do blocks to the store and stuff like that. And then in the summer I take blocks. It's just cold right now sure. and I don't get out but I'll walk for about an hour and a half or something in the summertime. Okay. Does anybody have any more questions for him? 
Does anybody want to speak either for or against him? Come up, yeah. Um, Your name and address? Amy Pisanko, and my book address is 1100 Guns Road. Okay, go ahead. Could you spell your last name? B O Z Z A C C O. So oh. I do keys management for Jeremy. Okay. And so I've known him since 2017. And then we have a, which is when he looked at the address you guys approved him for before. Um, unfortunately, at that point, he had to move out of that apartment because of lack of funds. And so the, the county placed him in a diversion. Um, and then for a while, because he was still on probation at that point, the probation officer put him in the TLP for a little while, due, again, due to lack of funds, because um, he hadn't been uh, approved for his disability yet. I'm, sorry, okay. I'm, I'm really nervous. I don't know why I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because this has been like a two year and a half year process, and like this is like, I feel like my everything's writing on tonight. <laughs> it sounds okay. so horrible. But, um, so, and then you can only stay so long with TLP, so they put him back in diversion. And he just got approved in what was it September? Yeah. For your for his disability. So once he was approved, it's like, okay, you now we have money. Then we can go find him an apartment, um, which is very hard. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever tried to help somebody find an apartment that is a landlord that will take somebody that's a registered sex offender. It's almost impossible. And I have a lot of connections in the city with landlords that just automatically tell you no. Um, so anyway, um, but Jared, so I mean, once he's in his apartment, we will be going every single day to provide support to him because we do have monitoring so we'll go at least once a day possibly twice depending on when his meds are scheduled um because how long is that for i mean how long would you be doing that for uh, I, I hate to say forever but i mean in essence it could be forever okay. so i mean it's one of those things that right at this point um do you mind how much i tell them Jeremy? no okay so at this point he's on a mental health commitment a chapter 51 commitment so he's court mandated to have mental health treatment okay and at the um, and Jeremy wasn't officially diagnosed or started having treatment until he was in prison. So that was kind of when it all came out that he needed treatment. Um, so at this point, he's on a Chapter 51 commitment, and he actually just chose to stipulate to be to continue that last Thursday, right? Yeah. Um, so at this point, it's mandated that he has to have us. At some point, that could be the the judge says he doesn't, but he could still choose to have us at that point. And I think he would. I mean, I feel like he would, just because he chooses to stay on commitment and doesn't choose to contest it. Um, and then he sees a psychiatrist every two to three months. He gets an injection as part of his medication, and he's always been compliant, even when he lived in the apartment before when we had him. He was compliant with all that. At this point, <laughs> you guys are saying, what does he do all day? Um, I, I told the landlord if his, where he's at now is, um, it's technically a CBRF diversion. I don't know if you guys are familiar with diversion. No. Um, so typically it's a place that people go that they maybe need a little bit extra help, but they aren't quite where they need to go to the hospital for mental health. But because Jeremy had nowhere to go, that's where the county decided just to place them because there's no there. Um, but if I, I told the landlord if they have a complaint, it's probably that he doesn't come out of his room and he stays to himself. He's just a really quiet guy that just stays himself. Um, they would like him to be more social. <laughs> so, yeah. But I have my and family to pick me up. Yeah. And I guess I say that is, it shows he doesn't cause problems, right? You know, mm -hmm. that it's not going to be. And so, you, like you, you said, you're there once a day or twice a day or some representatives there. So. Yeah. Is, is he then regularly drug tested to make sure he is taking his medication or how do you know for sure? Or are you actually giving it to him? So we go, like for him at this point, his meds are all prescribed at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. So we would go every like 8 a.m. in the morning and watch him take them. Okay. And then if the doctor chooses to move the ones that are at 8 p.m. because a lot of times they will, because we then monitor at 8 and then we monitor again at 4. If they moved them to 4, we would go back at 4 and watch him take the ones at 4. Okay. So. Okay. I mean, and then just based on symptoms and stuff, we'd be able to tell fairly quickly, most likely, if he's not taking, like, the night ones, if the doctor doesn't move on. Right. But Jeremy's been very forthcoming with me. Like, I mean, just, was it maybe a month ago you told me that you were feeling more depressed and you asked for more mm -hmm. medication? I mean, and there's been other times where he's asked in the past that you started hearing more voices, you asked for more Risperdal. Um, so, I mean, he's been very forthcoming about his symptoms as far as that kind of 
Okay. And so is it most weeks he is with his relatives Thursday through Sunday? What do you, you know about every other week? Every other is week. That, I'm, I'm asking. I don't know. Yeah. Is that yeah, about every, every other week you'd say you go see mom? Okay. All right. And then the other week he's home with the grandma? Or, or well, well, grandma won me once a month. and okay. So it's like 12, every other weekend I might go to my family. Some was one yeah. of them. To one of them. <coughs> okay. Uh, and I told the landlord too. I mean, and I talked to my boss about this. Like, I want to vouch for all my clients. Like, I would vouch for Jeremy. Like, I want to do that for all my clients. And to me, that speaks just because, like, I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. But I. I um, okay. Around, so. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, all right. Does anybody have more questions for him? <coughs> no. Anybody want to make a motion? I will make a motion to uh, approve uh, the address here. 1311 yeah. North Dan's Avenue. No, Avenue. no, no, no. No, 1115 Cherry, Cherry Street. Yeah. Yeah, that's one. Oh, I'm sorry. 1115 Cherry Street, number 15. Uh, motion approved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion passes three to one. Okay, sir, so you've been approved uh, to move to a 1115 Cherry Street, apartment number 15. If you do move, you have to come in front of us again. All right? No. Okay. Uh, right. Next up is Mr. Ryan Pulley. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Pulley is not here. Can I have a motion to deny Mr. Pulley to 324 Quinton Street? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> um, one other thing, too, I didn't want to do with the, the person uh, in the room, but uh, Mr. Bishop, we need to send an officer out there, too. Um, obviously, he's still living there illegally. And I had a conversation with him and told him he had to bring that documentation and I also told him this video. So. so, okay, I just got a question. So you just said that and I agree with you, but lots of times we tell them to send an officer, like when people are in the room, yeah. why, why is it different this time? I, I just, I, you know, I just, I didn't want to um, basically say, you know, you got to get out of there. I just, I just didn't feel it was appropriate at that point. Oh, okay. So, rather than just say, hey, you know, and I'm going to find your grandma or Pepper's aunt or whatever because she's going to get fined. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll so, yeah. Um, one of the things, too, is um, is there anything else here? I just want to bring up one other quick thing uh, to the board, real quick. Um, I was uh, interviewed by uh, uh, Channel 5 or I'm Channel 2. <laughs> um, and I did send information on those two individuals. I never got a response back from you. I emailed you the, I scanned. Um, they did a, they basically searched out uh, right. people that have been denied to see if they were living in those locations. I did, yes. we did submit a repeating assessment. Yep. Yeah. And they were? Yeah, we, we sent the detectives. You did, okay. And I just never got a response back. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, um, the detectives were aware and um, the community police officers were also informed. Okay, so. okay. Um, it, the, the, the interview was just basically basically says the people that you deny, how do you know that they're not living there? And I said, I said, well, <coughs> you know, if we believe they are, we send an officer out. If not, we don't. I said we can't follow up on every every single one every every day. every day. That's not. And in some of those situations, we do send officers out two, three times. They're not present when the officers go out there. So I mean, if they're not there, we've got nothing to. Stand on. Yep. And I do send an email to PD the next day after the meeting and let them know who was approved and okay. who was denied and if they were approved for 90 days. It says on there okay. what and, they were approved. And if they were denied from an address they said they're currently living at, we do request that an officer go out there. And that, I mean, that's what I thought, you know, if, yep. you know, but. They just got to catch them there. Right, right. 
Okay, uh, if there's nothing else, um, our next meeting is January 8th at uh, 4 p.m. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, please. Yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And then I'll be locked out. <laughs> so I probably can't make the motion. Well, you can you can make the motion. I can put your okay. vote into it. I'll second the motion. Yeah, this one. Yeah. All right. Everybody in favor of adjourning? Yes. Aye. Right. Yes. All right, motion passed.